All right, well, welcome into this video editing tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today, we're going to talk about 10 tools that you just got to know about when you're using Premiere Pro. For the most part, it's the tool strip there in the UI, uh, but we're going to kind of delve off into another little feature of Premiere as well. There's some really, really, really helpful stuff there. If you're not familiar with it, I think you'll enjoy this video. So let's jump in and check this out. Now, I've got some clips here just of uh, some footage that I shot one day, uh, on, primarily on my GoPro when I went out uh, for the shoot, uh, just from unloading my car to like working in this, this living room and all this different stuff. So we're going to use some of these clips here today. The first tool that I want to talk about is the black arrow or the selection tool. Note the hotkey, the letter V. Very, very important because you're going to be jumping to this tool all the time, especially when you're using other tools. Some of the cool things about this are, well, number one, you're going to be using it for the most part when you're navigating your timeline. But you can also drag out a selection and select a whole bunch of clips and like click and drag them to move them anywhere you want. And you can move the video track up to a different track and the audio track to a different track. I'm going to undo that stuff because I actually don't want to do that. Something else you can do is select like a clip or multiple clips even. Hold on the Alter Option key and drag to just duplicate that uh, duplicate that clip right uh, right out of the gate. So it just is a quick way to duplicate a clip if need be. Another thing you can do with this tool is use the hotkey Command, Option, or Control, Alt while clicking. And you can, let's see here, I, I grab this clip while holding Command and Option. It's easiest to just show you. I can click, see those two arrows that show up, drag it back to the beginning of the clip before and drop it in place. And it drops it right in there and it doesn't just like cover up. See, normally if I just gra grab and drag and drop this over something, see how it just covers up and truncates my clip? It doesn't do that. It doesn't just come in here, see it with a regular drag and drop. Boom, it just covers up all that stuff. If you hold down command and option, it grabs it and it ripples out the video that's in front of it. So it just pushes that video forward down the timeline without deleting it. So you can like, if you need to quickly swap shots and say, you know what, actually I want to move this back on the other side of that clip, command option and drag it and you can just drop it right in place. Such a huge time saver, really, really cool. Now, when you're clicking on your tracks, you can just command or control click on a track and it will select the video and audio together. That's a nice little thing. And you can, of course, shift click to uh, select multiple tracks on your timeline as well. So the selection tool is just going to be one of those things that you use all the time. You're going to be jumping back to it, navigating and working with your video. The black arrow selection tool, it is vital. So next up, number two, we've got the track select forward and backward tools. Now, what the, these tools do is they allow you to select a portion of your video. Like if I click here, it's going to select this clip and every clip to the end of my timeline. So if I need to like throw video in between this arrival unloading car and shooting husband clip, I can grab the track select forward tool and just grab everything on my timeline and just push it down. See that? It's so fast, it's so easy, or I can grab it and just move it right back if I decide, man, that's not quite right. Now the move backward tool, I actually need to grab all my video and move it down my track a little bit. If you're working on something and you realized you began your edit around the one minute mark or one minute and seven second mark, you can grab the class the track uh, select a backward tool and just grab everything and just drag it right back and by the way you don't if I undo that you don't have anything selected just using the track select backward tool is going to automatically select everything and push everything back so it's such a time saver it's so fast and easy it's really really great now we have uh, next up the ripple edit tool now the ripple edit tool is really really great because well normally let's say I wanted to clip the end of this video clip off like right here where I'm getting ready to take pictures so I'd have to highlight my clip I'd have to drag over the end of the clip to shorten it and then I have to grab all this video and move it back well, let me just undo a couple times. With Ripple Edit, you grab the Ripple Edit tool, you select what you want to edit, and actually let me just grab with the Move tool. I'm going to highlight this clip with the Move tool, so with my uh, clip selected, grab the Ripple Edit tool, and I can just drag the clip back right to where I want it. And when I let go, it not only cuts the bit away I don't want, but it Ripple deletes the space in between, so all the other clips just collapse right back to where they need to be. So instead of going through and cutting and extracting and then selecting clips and dragging them back, with Ripple Delete, you just bam just select it and go now you can quickly access ripple delete even when you have the regular arrow tool let's say I want to do that again I can select that track and hold down my command or control key and hover on either side of your edge let's say I want to ripple this out which I can't but I can ripple it back and you can see I can just quickly ripple delete even when I'm using the, the selection tool the black arrow so I'm gonna undo that a couple times let's move over to the rolling edit tool this is the fourth tool that we're covering now with the rolling edit tool we can select entire transitions and just move the 
transition itself. So it's not going to, or well, it will shorten one clip, but as it like shortens this clip, it's lengthening the shooting husband clip here. So there's never a black gap. So that's really, really cool. We can select and then shift select to select multiple, uh, but well, in that case, both the audio and the video transition and just move it exactly where it has to be uh, until we're happy. This is great if you already have a transition on that clip, like if I've got a little fade or cross dissolve or something, I can still grab that transition and shift it either left or right and get exactly what I need. It is a thing of beauty. And I should also mention when you have a uh, the edge or the 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 border of two clips here where they meet up when you're using the rolling edit tool, if you hit the letter T, you enter what's called trim mode where you can get this very uh, nice and clear heads up display where you can grab the middle of the video and just drag one way or another and adjust the exact exact point at which the clips are going to trade off and you can also ripple delete forward or backward so I could just say you know what I just want to get rid of that part where I'm messing around with my camera and you can see it just ripple deletes it right out of there and all the other clips collapse right back onto it so the trim edit uh, view it's pretty useful it's pretty cool there I could do a whole tutorial on uh, the trim uh, tool here in photo uh, in Photoshop in Premiere uh, so we're not going to get into it necessarily but just know you can select areas like that and hit the letter T and jump in and just it's a really great way to very, very precisely, frame by frame, fine tune exactly where the transition between two clips occurs. And next up we have the rate stretch tool. Now the rate stretch tool is kind of neat because uh, we can grab a clip with this and we can pull it out and what it's going to do is either speed up or slow down the clip in order to have it fill that area. You can see it slowed it down to 20%. So if I play this, I mean, I'm hardly moving, right? If I just stop that and I shift and select both of my tracks and I collapse it way down, in this case, I'm gonna be moving much quicker. Well, not as quick as I should be. Let's, let's really collapse it down. And you can see here, now I'm moving much faster than I normally would be because I've collapsed it down. And if I zoom way in, I can see it's 236% faster than it should be. Well, the 236% in terms of speed, it should be if I right click and go to speed and duration. Really, normal speed is, of course, 100%. Hit OK, and we're back to 100%. So the rate stretch tool uh, can be useful for slowing down a clip by dragging it out, uh, or it can be useful for speeding up a clip by just dragging it in and collapsing it. Also useful, by the way, if you have, let's say I need this clip to just fill out to like right here. I can just select both of these, grab my rate stretch tool, and just drag it out. And there, it's loaded down to 84%, but maybe I can tolerate it for whatever this clip is or whatever we're using it for. And I have the con Content now to fill in the area that I need to fill in. So the rate stretch tool can definitely be super duper useful. And you know what, actually I should throw in a quick tip when you're using rate stretch and you're like collapsing stuff or even slowing stuff down, it's a good idea to select your clip and go clip uh, video options, uh, time interpolation and choose frame blending. It just, I don't know, it's a little bit more pleasing almost always uh, with the the final finished effect that you get. Uh, it just helps kind of blend all those frames together because you're taking a huge number of frames and just smashing them down to a tiny little area or vice versa. You're taking a reasonable number of frames and really trying to stretch them out so long. Uh, so frame blending there and time interpolation can be helpful to give you a better result. Now the next tool in the list and number six of our 10 must need tools or, or basic tools that you just gotta know in Premiere is the razor tool. So this tool is pretty self-explanatory. You just click click and it's going to cut for you so it's going to cut your clips the nice thing about this is it snaps to the playhead so if you need to cut make a cut in an exact area you can just drop the playhead there and it'll automatically snap to it uh, if you do cut just the video track when you hover over the audio track it's going to snap to where that cut was placed and it will uh, it'll allow you to cut that just uh, perfectly just a quick trick uh, for when you're using the razor tool before we go on to the next thing. Let's say I'm, I'm you know, moving through this here. I'm going to select the whole clip and I'm going to use my razor tool. I'm going to make a cut here and I'll like make a cut here. I'm just, just in totally arbitrary areas. Again, this is where the hotkey for the selection tool is really useful because just the letter V, you're back to moving around and like obviously you don't want to be moving around with the razor tool because everywhere you click, boom, you're going to split your, your video. If I select this piece of video and I hit option, delete or alt backspace or alt delete, I'm sorry, on the PC, it's going to delete but ripple delete that video so you can see it not only deleted the video so if normally you hit delete you're gonna have that space there but alt or option delete make sure you select the video and it's gonna ripple delete it so you can just cut that out and again push everything right back to where it needs to go so I'm gonna get rid of those cuts that I made with the razor tool and let's carry on to number seven now tool number seven is the slip tool it's this guy right over here and what this is gonna allow me to do let me see if I can find a good example here uh, let's say 
here where I'm photographing the husband, I don't want to see all this junk here at the beginning, right? Where I'm, I'm going and getting the camera. I want the clip to begin right here where I have the camera in front of my face. So I can use the slip tool and just, it, what it's going to do is it's going to maintain the video size. In fact, let me uh, undo that. Let me select. Let me select both the audio and video here. I'm going to grab the slip tool. What it's going to do is it's it, 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 uh, this clip is much larger than just this little how many how many seconds is it? You know, one minute fifty seven to two thirty three. So about thirty six or thirty or thirty seven seconds long. You know, this clip might be ten or fifteen minutes long. So by slipping, I can sort of move the footage through this little thirty seven second window that where where I've placed it on my timeline. So again, I want this shot right here where my, the camera's at my face to be the opening frame. So I'm going to select the entire clip, grab the slip tool, and I'm going to start pulling this backward. Right, So I'll pull it back, pull it back, and I'm just watching here for when it looks like I'm getting something I like. Let's see there. I don't know. Yeah, right about there. It looks like I have the camera in my hand. I'm kneeling at this point, but that's all right. I went back a little further than I should have. Uh, but at least I have the camera up to my face, and then it just plays through the clip as it should. So the slip tool can be so useful, especially if you just need to adjust a clip a little bit in this or that direction. You want to get rid of something at the beginning of a clip, but instead of having to go in, you know, select the clip, and you nudge it in, and then, you know, grab it, and shift it over, and shift everything else over, or even perform a ripple delete. It's even faster than doing that if what you need to do is just shift a clip back and forth a little bit. Uh, with the slip tool, you're able to go in and just slip the footage underneath that little window window you've created, uh, which is great because you don't have to worry about re-editing and recutting everything around it. Now, if you absolutely just need to move the entire clip, that's where the slide tool comes into play, and the slide tool is our eighth tool here in Premiere. Now, the slide tool allows you to grab a clip and move the whole clip, and it will adjust both clips on either side automatically. So it's made this clip over here longer, and it's shortened this clip right here. So I'm just grabbing this one. Well, let's make sure I have both audio and video selected. Uh, I'm just grabbing this clip and moving it in this direction, and it's automatically shortening the clip in front of me and lengthening the clip behind me. Now, quick caveat, if like this clip behind me didn't have the footage, Premiere would just fill it with black space. So you would have to go in and cut that out or adjust it or put new video, uh, maybe you know, place some video over it, something like that. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it's just something to keep your eye on. It, uh, Premiere isn't just magically going to make video that's going to appear um, in a blank space. It does just just fill it with black space. So just know that. All right, now next up we have the pen tool. The pen tool might not seem like much, but number one, one of the cool things you can do with it is like when you apply a, uh, let's, let's go video effect here. I don't know, color correction, brightness, contrast, drag it out here on this clip, go to effect controls, and we'll just make this like super bright, ridiculously bright. You can use the pen tool, which you have here, to draw a mask. And there within the mask is the only place where brightness contrast is going to be affecting our image. So that's one nice thing about the pen tool. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, it generally works the same way as the pen tool in Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. There's a million and a half tutorials out there on how to get started using that pen tool. The way that I usually use the pen tool is here. Let's um, hold down or just use our mouse wheel hovering over like the word audio one and increase our audio track big enough so we get that white line going through the middle. I'm going to hit my plus icon to make this bad boy bigger. And let's actually, let's move back to an earlier clip here. This clip where I'm unloading stuff for my car. Every time I would set something down on the ground, you can see it's making noise. Let's say I want to accentuate that noise. Noise. Well, with the pen tool, I can just click very quickly and place anchor points on either side of it. Now, just for uh, comparison's sake, if I'm just using the black arrow tool, I need to command or control click to place a line, and then I can click or drag that line, and you can see that would make the, the sound louder or quieter. And there's other stuff you can do with this white line as well, not just volume, but volume is for the most part what I use it for, so that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, with the pen tool, I can command click on a point and get a tangent handle to appear, and I can just fade the noise right up. So when something drops on the ground, it gets really loud and goes back to quiet. And I can quickly do that for these other uh, these other bits of noise as well. Now look at this. This is giving me a tangent handle on both sides because I already used the pen tool. So what I want to do is hold down my command or control key and just select that tangent handle, and it's going to select only one side. It's going to isolate the tangent handle to just the one side of my pen point. So over here again, we'll apply that. Command or control click to add a tangent handle. Command or control click to isolate the tangent handle. And you can see very quickly we can create these like little noise bumps. I mean this can go in either direction. You can, you can use it to accentuate a sound or a bit of audio, or you can use it to 
to just level audio. Some parts need to be a little quieter. Some parts need to be a little bit louder. And using the pen tool, you can very, very accurately just fade and bevel and, and change the noise however you like. And I should also mention, um, if you make your uh, your video track, excuse me, large enough, which I'm on the wrong video track, you can also use the pen tool up there and adjust stuff like opacity. Right click right there on that FX tab. And you can just choose things like motion. You can edit all these different things, opacity, time remapping, the speed of the clip, all these different things you can adjust. Now it's really kind of wonky and janky, uh, you know, like rotation and try to affect it by playing around with the center line. I honestly don't even touch that stuff. I do everything up here in the effect controls when it comes to sizing and positioning and scaling and rotating and all that junk. Um, but when it comes to really working with your audio and you know working with specific bits of your audio that need to be adjusted, the pen tool is so helpful and it's so fast and really, really quick and easy to use. And last but not least, it's none of the tools here in the strip, but rather one of the tools over here, the lift and extract commands. If you don't see these, by the way, hit the little uh, plus icon here and choose them there. Well, not there and there. It's there and there. Lift and extract uh, from here. And when you click them, you can add them to your strip of buttons here. I'm going to hit cancel uh, because I have them here in my button strip. Now, the way this works is it's, it's just a different way to edit. It can be kind of interesting. If you're familiar with setting in and out points, uh, and I believe they are right here under marker. Yeah, mark in, mark out. I'm always using the hotkeys. I for in, right? Out for, or O for out. Uh, when you set an inner out point, let's say I want to remove this bit where he's walking on set. So you can see him right there. I'm going to hit the letter I here. It's going to set my in point. I'm going to drag this over until he wanders out to right about there. And I'm going to hit the letter O. So I've set my in and out point. Now, in order to lift this, I can just hit the lift, uh, the lift button here. Notice the hotkey is the semicolon. The problem with lift is when I do this, it's going to leave a big blank open space. I don't like that. The uh, extract command here is not only going to cut out the bit between your in and out point, but it's also going to ripple everything else back and collapse it onto your footage that's already there. So you never have to worry about having some wayward uh, big gap or something like that. Now, you do need to use your in and out points. Alt X or option X, I believe that's a default hotkey, gets rid of your current in and out points, or you can just, you know, hit like I, O, there we go, or let's say you decide, you know what, actually I want to get rid of this back here, hit the letter I, hit the letter O, and you can, it just moves the in and out points, it's so fast and easy, hit the apostrophe key, you lift it right out of there, note the apostrophe is for extract, I'm sorry, extract, not lift, lift is semicolon, apostrophe is the one that I usually use, extract, because it cuts it out and it ripple, uh, ripple deletes everything else that you have in your timeline, right back onto it. So that's going to be about it for this one. Uh, the 10 tools that I think are not quite essential, but very, very helpful uh, to know how to use in Premiere. Something like the ripple delete tool, just as an example, uh, a couple years ago when I learned how to use it, just changed the way I worked and edited video. It made it much more enjoyable, made it so much faster and easier. And just, I mean, I absolutely loved it. It's so useful and it saves such a huge amount of time. It's such a like I hate to say it, but it's kind of like a beginner thing. I don't want you to feel bad if you didn't know about it before, but it kind of is a beginner thing. But hey, take the knowledge, run with it. So if only one or two or three of these tools or techniques make their way into your workflow, hey, that's a win. That's great. Save as much time as you can. Work as fast as you can. And that's what these tools allow you to do. The Ripple tool, I absolutely love it. The Slip tool, I absolutely love it. Um, there's just some really, really great stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a little like on it. Drop a comment below if you feel so inclined. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video in the future. And for all of these 10 tools in Premiere Pro, from lifting and extracting to the black arrow tool, to the rate adjustment tools and the ripple delete and rolling edit and everything else, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, cutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.